this is the big news about LIGO. LIGO Laser Interferometer <laughs> Gravitational <laughs> Wave Observatory. Oh, we got there. I had to think it through. So, season three, what does that mean? Well, it, you know, we thought that uh, dragons and so forth were a little passe, so we put a little cowboy on a dinosaur. <laughs> um, but no, that's not what it's about. It's, uh, it's, it's about measuring and picking up gravitational waves from the universe. So, um, like any good trailer, we want to start with a recap of seasons one and two. The big news in season two was that LIGO got hitched to Virgo. LIGO is an instrument, an American instrument. Uh, Virgo is in Europe, and uh, you will see the significance of this pairing in a few minutes. But truly, the, uh, where we left off at the end of season two is encapsulated by this uh, diagram, which is actually a catalog of all the gravitational waves that we have seen so far. So if you're not with me yet, you're about to be. In order to understand all of these things, you need to know what is LIGO, you might be wondering. And what is a gravitational wave? And why am I so excited about LIGO measuring gravitational waves? Well, we'll start with gravitational wave. Gravitational wave is a wave. And waves in space carry energy, they can carry information. Music is a wave through uh, the atmosphere. Uh, there are waves in ponds. But you may not realize that there are also waves in space and time. Space and time are actually uh, um, a medium that can carry waves. And in fact, uh, we see waves from the mergers of, uh, of very, very massive objects. We think of space and time as, as space is, you know, forward two feet, right two feet, up and down two feet. But in fact, uh, and we think of time as ticking by with steady seconds, but in fact, they're kind of malleable and variable. The length of one second isn't always the same as, as the next or a different one second. So I like to, when you think of this fabric of space time, I like to show this. It's got you can have little wrinkles in it and, and perturbations, yes, because, and what does it? Mass <laughs> will, will change the curvature of space-time. So I'm sure that next month when Dr. Reitzel is telling you all about black holes, he will talk about the way in which black holes warp space-time. Um, and so uh, that space-time, like a medium, can also carry gravitational waves that emanate out when you get a black hole or massive bodies um, falling into each other, the energy released of two black holes falling into each other caused space-time to wiggle. Did you see how that kind of wiggled there? Yes. That causes these ripples through space-time. Those ripples come and pass by the Earth, and we always love the scale of effect vastly exaggerated. The Earth also wiggles uh, back and forth because space and time itself gets... So, Believe it or not, we can measure those wiggles. Those are great, greatly exaggerated because the size of those wiggles is one ten thousandth of the size of a proton. A proton, the smallest particle, not small, but I mean, in your atoms. Protons themselves are made up of smaller things. We won't go there, but protons are very tiny. And so this is a wiggle that's just one ten thousandth the scale of that. You might think that that would be utterly impossible to measure. And in fact, Einstein himself, who predicted this, thought that's utterly impossible to measure. But that brings us to what is LIGO? Believe it or not, we clever humans figured out a way to measure something as subtle as that, the wiggling of space-time, through this instrument called LIGO. So LIGO is uh, made up of instruments that look like this a kind of control center and building in the middle with some, a lot of measuring and, and, and mechanical stuff. And then these long arms that go out in exactly 90 degrees away from each other. And in fact, I've just shown you two different installations of LIGO, one in Washington, one in Louisiana. <laughs> Woo! And, uh, and so these things are, I think, four kilometers long. So long, how long are they that they actually, the Earth actually curves on that length, and the end of one is actually about a meter lower than, wow. than, uh, than at the origin here. So you have, to, uh, you have to build them very carefully. And what happens with those long lengths is uh, we send laser light down them. Here's a little diagram of the two different things. 
and bounce it back. So you send a beam of light, bounce it back. So the laser source sends light, some of it goes down that arm, some of it goes down this arm, bounces off the mirror, comes back, and when it combines, if these two arms are exactly the same length, the light will combine constructively. In other words, they'll add together. Waves, when you add them in their phase, in other words, they reinforce each other, but if you have them come uh, like this, but if you have them come opposite waves, like that blue and red that's on there, you will get destructive interference and the wave will go away. So in other words, you get some light uh, and uh, there they are bouncing back. And um, if they're constructive, you'll get light. And if they're not, they won't. So what happens when that little wave comes by and makes the Earth wiggle mm -hmm. is the instrument itself wiggles. And now look at what happens at the lower right there. When those oh. lights are different, lengths become different because that gravitational wave passes by, it flashes on and off. And you get a signal that looks like these things. These are the two different uh, detectors. Um, one, the, the one in Washington, one in Louisiana. And when you superimpose them on top of each other, it's the same wiggle measured many, many miles away. And you'll see this sort of thing. You hear this little sound. This is sped up so you can hear a little. Okay. Or if you like listening to this one, this one's kind of a little more fun. <laughs> So that's what you hear because they're sp the black holes are spiraling into each other, so it's faster, 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 so it gets to higher and higher and higher frequency. And uh, so we actually can listen to the sounds uh, you know, translated that are made by uh, gravitational waves. One of the other things is because they have, uh, there are two of them, you can actually locate on the sky where the source is because there's a travel time. If it's coming from over there, it'll hit Washington first and then Louisiana. If it's coming from over there, it'll hit Louisiana first and then Washington. So you can sort of, and you might imagine if they hit at the same time, it could be anywhere on a line that's equidistant from the two. So with two, you can get kind of a stripe in the sky where the thing might be. So this was huge news. This was 2015 announced in January of 2016. They found a second one. Lo and behold, this is real. Uh, it's not overstating it to say it's an, a new era of astronomy, <coughs> but there's more. So these are the two. That was season one. We discovered them. In season two, back to the marriage of Virgo and LIGO. Virgo is in Europe, gives us a new distance, another third detector, and with three, you can triangulate and get the location. So instead of just getting that stripe, you can, you put in the third one, you can find it. And this was important because in the end of season two, toward the end of season two, when uh, a gravitational wave was detected and they were able to point uh, telescopes from Earth to it, they found light coming from that thing, and uh, we're able to measure two neutron stars uh, combining, you know, uh, colliding into each other. And this was huge, because if you've got the optical light, um, then you can also learn all kinds of things about it. So what a moment for humanity. I love this. A third of all the professional astronomers in the world worked on this result. Wow. Kind of amazing. Here is just a bunch of spectra, because I'm a spectroscopist and I love showing spectra. Um, but that tells us data, tells us information about uh, the object itself. So this was big, big, big news. And then they shut it down uh, to refurbish it and upgrade it and get ready for season three. So there we are in season two. We've got all of the uh, measurements of a couple black holes. And in the bottom right, the two <laughs> neutron stars. It's longer because they're less massive. So they take a little bit longer to fall into each other. It makes sense. So our end of season one and two, 10 black hole, black hole mergers, one neutron star, neutron star merger. And sometimes you might have seen them uh, shown like this, two black holes coming together to create uh, a, another black hole, and then the one neutron star. So are you ready for season three? Yeah. <laughs> so season three uh, started in April, and it was announced on May 2nd that in the first month, five, Whoa. right? Wow. So the upgrade has really helped. And uh, the first three were black hole, black hole. Then there were two neutron stars. 
Unfortunately, one of the detectors was offline, so we didn't get the location thing that we needed. So people have looked through the large area of sky, but nobody has seen any, any light coming from it. So that hasn't, you know, it's not like the other one where we're like, wow, the fifth one might be a black hole neutron star merger. And that has yet to be seen. So you can see the question mark still needs to be uh, confirmed. And there are nine others that they're still working on to confirm. So that's more in the first month of season three than in all of season one and two combined. So this is very exciting because this is a whole new phenomenon, a whole new way of looking at the universe really through measuring gravitational waves. So it is very exciting. Uh, we are just at the start of season three. So stay tuned, there'll be a lot more results.